Entrepreneurs and small business owners today need to be as smart as possible to survive. Sadly, it's not enough to be brilliant at what you do anymore. If a business is to be truly successful, you also need to have smart business sense on your side. Every business is different, yet every entrepreneur faces the same challenges. First you've got to get started, right? What's your idea? Uh, what's your support system? How much money do you have? You can have all the best ideas in the world. There are millions of entrepreneurs out there who have fantastic ideas. But it's how do you find the right people to help you deliver it? You're going to need to structure the team. You're going to need to hire senior people. You're going to need more investment. I think the biggest challenges as a small business were being able to scale up when we needed to onto bigger jobs for bigger clients, then having the faith in us to be able to do that. I guess if you're a small to medium sized business owner, it's very difficult to attract big customers, great talent and capital. You're too risky and you're too illiquid, so you can't easily get in and out of your company if you're an, if you're an investor. Jeremy Harbour is a globally recognised expert in mergers and acquisitions in Europe, the USA and Asia. He has investments in 12 countries, has bought and sold over 50 companies and advised around 200 more. As a small, typically under-resourced business, you can't go for the really big contracts. And because you can't go for the big contracts, you remain a small, under-resourced business. Callum Lang has built, bought and sold businesses across two continents. He is the author of Progressive Partnerships, The Future of Business, and is a renowned speaker at conferences on entrepreneurship, also regularly featuring on TV and in the press. So, in a nutshell, an agglomeration is bringing a group of companies that are in the same sector, but typically geographically diverse. You bring them together and you list that group of companies on the public stock exchange. The twist that we've introduced is that rather than try and merge all those companies together, we keep them independent. We allow them full control over their business. So actually when we do an agglomeration, uh, we have a founding group of businesses that we take through an IPO, an initial public offering, and then everybody else who joins uh, the agglomeration after that are technically publicly listing their company through a reverse merger. And what we've done is we've translated the jargon from the banks and the, the big private equity firms and so on into a format and into a, uh, a medium, if you like, that the, the, the normal business owner can understand. And so it's an amazing opportunity to actually bring entrepreneurs in and keep the, retain the spirit of being an entrepreneur whilst also getting the benefits of floating and be able to reinvest that money into other ventures. The marketing group was the first agglomeration founded by four global companies. Together they provide a 360 degree marketing service. These companies are nice and polite, 1990, Black Marketing and Creative Insurgents. Since then, the marketing group has been constantly expanding through tactical acquisitions. Initial public offering essentially is, um, I guess, offering part ownership of your business to the public and giving the public an opportunity to join you in uh, the rewards of creating a, a successful business. An IPO can change everything for a business. A carefully orchestrated one can add instant value. As an entrepreneur, we all grow up dreaming about doing an IPO. What it does is it gives you access to bigger brands that are more scalable. You get access to all of these different skill sets, which is more enticing for some of the global market brands. Another benefit is really the ability to acquire other businesses. So to grow by acquisition. And that's the most amazing thing, seeing value in other companies and bringing them into the, into the journey. Creating a better world requires teamwork, partnerships and collaboration, for which we'll need an entire army of companies to work together in the next few decades. All of a sudden, you know, you're not necessarily alone in this big bad world of trying to build your businesses. The great thing about the marketing group is that it's it's lots of different talented people within one sector. Where each one of them is bringing a strength uh, to the table. We're pitching on a large tourism board, for, you know, for instance, with Nice and Polite from London. It allowed me to tap into regional or global expertise should I want to go to another country quickly. You're a fresh stock of resources, both from a knowledge standpoint, both from a capital standpoint. Barriers that probably looked a lot bigger yesterday probably don't look as big today. Small businesses are often guilty of having a tunnel vision approach, focusing on the job at hand, whereas agglomeration opens your eyes to a big business approach. I think that the board's really interesting. So when you join the agglomeration, you sit as peers with other business owners around the, the world. Another interesting aspect of the agglomeration is that you can gain a board you couldn't afford. 
The board of the marketing group is made up of the company's CEOs, as well as experts from the Unity Group. Because you make up the board, you also make the rules. The board really is an enabler. It's an enabler for growth for each of the businesses that are part of the agglomeration. There is really no downside if I'm the person making the rules because I always was the person making the rules and now I'm doing it with a team of people who know what they're doing. I think TMG have got the, mark, the model right in terms of not being intrusive and being very, very proactive and actually allowing the founders to keep on growing their business but supporting them as and when they need to. You're now turbocharged. You're, you, you've got the big engine, you've got the team that's, that's rooting for you to do that. One of the biggest draws of agglomeration is the financial side. Well, there's an immediate financial benefit. Um, you have public liquidity of your value. Of course, they've done phenomenally well with uh, the TMG stock. Uh, you know, we listed it at one euro at, in early June, and now by end July, it's it closed at 7.2 euros last night. In no way on earth would I have sold the company in any amount of years for the amount of money that the shares are now currently worth. Your freedom is what has made you the business you are today. Agglomeration gives you all the benefits of an acquisition without compromising you, your business, and the way you want to run it. If anything, it's more like you are acquiring a big business. I think there's a big surprise uh, from people that they're actually, you know, the next morning they wake up and everything's identical. You know, they, they still, they're still in charge of their own bank account, they're still in charge of their own office, they're still um, in charge of recruiting their people. And then when they choose to play the PLC card, they can choose to play the PLC card. They can point to the 80 million euro market cap or they can point to the geographical diversity. Oh, we have an office in Singapore. Oh, we have an office in Australia. I think the sense of autonomy with each business, that each business person can run their own business in exactly the same way they were running it uh, prior to joining the group is really important because I think that that makes, uh, not only personally makes it more enjoyable, but actually uh, makes the businesses more successful and makes the group more successful as a whole. As an entrepreneur, it's really about the impact that you make and, and this just allows you to make a much, much bigger impact on a lot more people um, and, and have a lot more fun doing it. Entrepreneurs are great at solving problems, so give them the, the finance to solve problems and they'll go out and change the world.